Today, we'll show you how to secure your Apple ID and trusted devices with a hardware security key. Hello everyone, this is Rick with Cybermedics. Today we'll demo Apple's progress on implementing hardware security keys for account protection. Next, we'll discuss adding an Apple ID recovery key and activating an advanced data protection for iCloud backup. The video is broken up into four parts so you can skip around as desired. I'm super excited about Apple announcing support for hardware security keys. First thing we're going to do is go in through the web interface and show you logging in what information is available from Apple on security keys. So we'll click the sign in. And because we have uh, Bitwarden as our password manager, we can autofill. There's a link to videos above if you're interested in a great password manager. Now it's texting to my Apple device on the SIM. But instead, we're going to say, did not get a verification code. We've added our Google Voice number to our account. And because of that, we can get a text on the Google Voice number. We come over here, copy the code, paste it, and we're into the account. The beauty of that is if you ever lost your cell phone, which we don't recommend adding a cell phone for second factor authentication, you would still be able to get access to your account because you have it tied to your Google Voice number. And that Google Voice number is then linked also to your Gmail account. So it's much more secure. And in addition, you don't have the vulnerability of losing your device. So we go down here to account security. We're going to come down and click on the learn more section thing to keep in mind is that you are using the hardware security key as your second factor authentication. It's being used in place of your normal six digit verification code. What's required? You need at least two FIDO certified keys and iOS 16.3 or the Mac Ventura 13.2 or later. You have to have already set up two-factor authentication on your Apple ID. What doesn't work with the security keys for Apple ID? So the first thing you notice here is iCloud for Windows. If you use that, it's broken. Older devices. You won't be able to implement the keys if you have older devices on your account. Also, child accounts, managed IDs aren't supported. So choosing the right keys has to be a FIDO certified key, as it says here, FIDO certified security keys. Authentrend is a major manufacturer, YubiKey. There's various types of keys. Basically, you have an NFC key and you have a USB-C or a lightning port key that plugs into the device. The easiest thing to implement on iPhones is going to be the NFC key. Things to keep in mind, once you've added a key right here, it says when you use a security key for your Apple ID, you'll either need a trusted or device or the key to do the following. To sign into your Apple ID on a new device via the web, to reset your Apple ID or password, add an additional security key or remove a security key. They have some advice here, which is smart. Keep a security key in more than one place. So you may want to keep one key with you and put the other key in a secure location. You must add and maintain at least two security keys. You can have up to six keys. This next thing is important. If you haven't used or unlocked a device in more than 90 days, you're automatically going to be signed out of that device once you add a key. And the thing to keep in mind is if your device can't be updated, you won't be able to sign back in on that device. So if you don't meet the operating system requirements on the device, you will not be able to use the device to sign back in on your account. Okay, so now we're going to go on to continue on device. And there will be a notification on the phone, and we'll walk through the process of setting it up on the iPhone and an iPad. I thought it might be a good idea before we jump into actually adding the keys to walk through the software update on the iPhone. Just type search software and then click on your software update. Checking for updates, you'll see here. It shows that it needs to be upgraded to 16.3. If you have an older operating system, you may have multiple updates in order to get to 16.3. So we'll click on the download and install. And then you install the software, verifying the update. And it's up to date. And that's what you'll have to do to make sure you're at least at 16.3 before you can add the security key. 
Now that we've gone over the information Apple has on adding security keys and we've shown you how to update the iOS operating system, we'll physically add a key to the iOS device. On the screen on the left, come down to your settings, go into settings, and then under there, click on your account ID, and then you'll see password and security here. Select that. And then you can go to add security key and down here, you just say, add a security key and click continue. Now, before we click continue, I want to say that an NFC key is your best and easiest way to add a key on an iOS device. If, if you want the least amount of complications, you want to get one that's uh, NFC. So that's what we're going to use here is, is the blue security key from YubiKey that is NFC compatible. So we'll click continue. Uh, we have to enter our passcode. Now it's saying add the key. And what we're going to do is place this on the back. Right here is where the NFC receiver is at. We'll place it on the back of the key. And it'll immediately prompt us for our pin. You can add your pin there and then click continue. And then it'll ask you to name the key. And if you're okay with that, you can just continue from there. Now I'm using a wireless keyboard and wireless mouse to interface with the iOS device. Insert and activate your second key. So what we're going to do there is we're going to use a physical key and this time we're going to use a USB-A to lightning port adapter. And what that allows you to do is either use a USB-A key, you could have physically plugged it into there, or if you use one of these USB a to USB-C adapters, you can then use a USB-C key. This USB-C key is from Authentrend. It is a biometric key. And I, I really love this biometric key because it's superior to the Yubico for two particular reasons. The primary reason is when you f use three failed attempts with a fingerprint on one of these types of keys, it's going to lock out the key. Now, the way Authentrend handles that is they, they allow you to take the key out and plug it back in. With the YubiKey Bio key, you physically have to go and plug it into a machine and go to a site, unlock the key. I don't particularly like Yubico's implementation of their biometric keys. All right, so what we'll do is we've plugged in the adapter here. We'll plug in the key. And we'll say OK. Try again. It timed out on us. So we'll, we'll plug the lightning port in, you'll see the key has been activated and it's asking for your fingerprint. And it's really that simple, look at that. And I'm pressing enter on the keyboard. Now it's asking me, do I wanna stay signed into devices? So if you have other devices on your Apple ID account, they'll show up here and you can decide whether you wanna leave them signed in or not. If you wanna leave them signed in, they'll all get added with the hardware security key. If not, you'd have to re-authenticate with the key at the next time you logged into the device. We'll say stay signed in and the keys have been added and we're just done. It's really that simple. So now you can see on the device itself, we have security keys and we click on that. It'll show us the keys. There you see, we have the two keys added. On the iPad that I have here, there is no NFC capability. So since it wasn't on the account already, I thought it would be useful to walk you through the procedure for adding a device after you've already added your hardware security keys. Okay, I've signed in on this iPad. I just wanted to show you the process if you're adding a key after you've already put it on one of your other devices. So it's asking me to re-authenticate. I signed in with the password on the account, but you can see it's not going to let me access the account unless I present one of the keys. We're going to click try again. And it's going to say, use your key. What we're going to do is use that same cable interface device with the Authentrend key. And we have a link to the video on Authentrend. If you're interested, I recommend watching that video to show you what a great key that is. So we'll physically plug this in the side of the device. And you will see it's blinking. So it wants me to authenticate with my fingerprint. Failed, but we'll try it again. There we go. It's green. 
That's what I like about it. It shows you exactly on the key what's going on with it. And you notice we only had to present one key because we had to authenticate to the account itself. All it was asking us to do is prove that we are the account holder by presenting one of the keys. We could have presented either key. And that's something to keep in mind. When you go to add new devices, you will have to have one of the keys in order to authenticate those new devices. Final note is if you have older iPhones, this device is so old it would not authenticate to the account. That is a key thing to keep in mind when you go to implement these keys. You're going to have possibly some devices on your account that will not be able to be authenticated and you'll have to make the choice whether to keep them on the Apple ID or to remove them. As technology and security evolves, devices that can't be upgraded are not going to go forward You'll have to make a decision about whether the security is more important or having the device is more important. Security key is your best protection for securing the Apple ID. It's extremely important that you safely store your backup key in case you ever lost your primary key. You should also consider turning on advanced data protection for your iCloud security and creating a 28 character recovery key in case you ever lost your password and your devices. I thought in closing, we'd kind of go over the different types of keys and interfaces just so you don't get too confused. It can be a little overwhelming when you think about different devices, especially somebody like me who has Windows devices, Android devices, iOS devices. The thing to keep in mind is they make interfaces for just about any port. So that's a USB-C, USB-A. This is a Lightning and also USB-C port on the, the keys themselves. This one, as we indicated earlier, is also NFC, so you can wirelessly connect it. But you don't need a key for every type of port you have if you think about the interfaces that you're going to do, like we showed earlier. This one is a Lightning to USB-A connector, so you can plug in anything into a Lightning port. The point of all that is you don't have to go out and buy a key for every port that you have. We have a link to picking the right YubiKey above if you're interested in trying to find the right YubiKey. But by far and away, my go-to key is this Authentrin biometric key. The superior feature of biometric keys, unlike this key from YubiKey, which has a physical contact on the side, is you have to have the fingerprint in order to authenticate the key. Depending upon the way the service provider has implemented the key, you may just have to provide a physical touch. Normally, you have a pin associated with the key, but not all service providers make you provide that. What that means is if somebody physically got a hold of your key, like this key here, all they would have to do is touch the key. If they had your password, they'd be in your account. Here, they would have to have the password and a replication of your fingerprint in order to authenticate. It forces a higher level of security with a biometric key because regardless of what the service provider does, this key will not unlock without your fingerprint. That's a wrap on how to add a hardware security key to your Apple ID. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe to the channel. This supports our efforts in helping others with technology. Post any comments or questions below and have a great and wonderful automation day.